Alessio. Hey, congratulations for American Night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let, let me start off with the easy question here. What, where did you get the original story from? Um, where, where the origination for this uh, movie came from? Um, so the story takes place in the world of contemporary art. And I decided when I was writing the screenplay, I decided to set the, a story and this story in the world of art for two reasons. One is a personal experience I had when I was 17. I was born and raised in Florence and I went to a place to do some charity work and they said they had just built a church. And if I wanted to do some volunteer work, I could help a painter who was about to begin uh, doing some frescoes of the Virgin Mary in the church. It was three frescoes with the same technique uh, that was used 500 years ago by uh, Michelangelo. So basically after spending months and months on the scaffoldings 30 meters high, you know, hammering, literally hammering the synopia of the Virgin Mary, on the walls and then burning the woods to make the carbon and then passing the carbon on it and then passing the sort of cement where you would paint on. So I, I had very early on in my life, I had an encounter with art in a very practical, uh, physical way. So this is a personal reason. Uh, another, another reason is when I was writing the screenplay, I thought, the art in the widest sense of the term, meaning, uh, you know, architecture, buildings, books, music, sculptures, paintings, is actually all we have left from all the people that have ever lived mm. on this planet. So I thought art is sort of like an invisible chain, an invisible link that connects us to mankind, to people. And so I thought, this is why. <laughs> now, your centerpiece art uh, for the uh, entire storyline was the uh, Marilyn Mon Monroe's uh, screen printing from um, Andy Warhol. How, how did you come to choose that as the centerpiece uh, for, for the story? Um, this story is sort of a reflection on pop culture, on what is iconic which is why every choice was based on that, actually. This is why there, we have uh, the Dead Rockstar's diner. This is why there's a, Cad a Cadillac in that diner. This is why there is the Pink Marilyn uh, by Andy Warhol, because she was already a pop icon. And then he took that and made it into something else. Even with the music, for example, our composer Marco Beltrami, he did the same experiment sort of speak, he used the same technique. In other words, he took a classical piece uh, from Chopin or the Ave Maria and redid it in his own way. So it was the same approach of taking something iconic and pop and make it become something else. Well, you certainly do love your art and you, and you do know your art. I, I will have to commend you on that one because uh, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot of hints of uh, all the art different types of artwork throughout the entire film, which is great. Now, um, why, why, why did you, uh, um, because uh, the, the title states uh, American Night and you have an American cast, uh, but you're an Italian director, am I correct? Why, correct. Why, why did you want to make an American movie rather than, this could have easily been an Italian movie if you needed to. Um, America uh, is, I use it as a metaphor for the world because in America, there's people from all over the world. So it represents the world in a way, especially in New York City. There are literally people coming from every country, mm -hmm. you know, every country on the planet. And night represents the dark side, the obscure, the uncon uh, unconscious. So there are two metaphors. Wow. Now, t 
talk about your cast because I love the interaction between Emil and John, Jonathan um, versus each other uh, throughout the entire movie. Um, how how grateful and how lucky did you actually got you know got a lot of uh, you know very good names into a film like this? Well, it was it all originated from the screenplay. We I wrote this screenplay. We sent it out. And both the cast and the heads of the department, all the people that worked on it, they all really liked the script and they believed in it. So it all begins with telling a story. And it was really good working with uh, both Emil and Jonathan that you mentioned. They're super gifted, super talented, incredibly talented. So it was a honor and it was, it was great working with them. I'm, I'm curious, one of, you, one of the characters, um you know, a, a bill, villain as a character in your in your story named Shaky. Why did you make him as a narcoleptic? I mean, it's funny, but uh, but it's it's just kind of a uh, it's just kind of out there all all of a sudden uh, for for a film like this. Um, I just liked the idea of adding an element, a different uh, so. Basically, when I was writing the screenplay, I started from the uh, noir genre. So all of the characters are based on the classical characters from the noir. So John Kaplan, played by Jonathan Rhys Myers, is the anti-hero who does the right thing for the wrong reason or the wrong thing for the right reason. Um, then Michael Rubino, played by Emil Hirsch, is the antagonist. Sarah, played by uh, Paz Vega, is the good wife, and we did a twist on the classical good wife, because when we meet them, she's breaking up with him. She's not at home taking care of the house and the family. And then Katie, played by Annabelle Belmondo, she's the femme fatale. And Vincent, played by Jeremy Piven, is the innocent. Now, I started from the five classical characters of the noirs, and I did little twists. And Shaggy is an element of twist. I wanted to add an element of instability in these stories. And since it is it, the, on a thematic level, it's about, uh, it has different themes that uh, we sort of approach. And one of them is chaos versus order. They all wanna get something, but they all get some amount of chaos. And Shaky is an element of chaos. He's bringing the painting, but he's also bringing chaos into their lives. And this chaos is represented physically and metaphorically by art. So he brings an artwork and that, and chaos ensues. <laughs> well, it's it's a great move. I mean, I I do have to admire all, um, the uh, the cast that you actually brought into a to a film film like this. Did uh, did your set designer uh, recreated all the artwork uh, for, uh, for for your film? Um, well, what happened, I don't know the specifics, but I do know that the foundations gave us the rights to use uh, their work. So therefore we were allowed to, to access the original um, pieces in some cases, original files in other cases. So, and then obviously, uh, and then the other artworks, they're actually all real artists that I had seen in my life uh, from Italy, from UK, from Japan, from everywhere really. And then we contacted them and then they shipped their sculptures and paintings to the set. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. That's and then they, go ahead. No, no, I, go ahead and finish. No, I was just gonna say, and then we just uh, presented, we just did the world premiere in Venice, and they also, whoever could, which was most of them, reshipped the paintings and the sculpture to Venice. So we did an art exhibition opening of the art from the movie in Venice. Wow, that is terrific. Um, one of the things I noticed um, for your movie, American Night, you had Anastasia um, singing in, you know, she did a cameo singing in, in your film. Um, how did you recruit her to sing in the film? And did she write the song? Um, how did, can you repeat the question? 
I said, did you, did, did you, how did you recruit the singer, um, Anastasia, for, to do a cameo in the film? And did she write the song? Uh, she wrote the song, I believe, with the team. I don't remember the details. Um, we asked her to work on a sort of a ballad for a gangster that was also a metaphor for a love story and for the film. And I really wanted to have an element of the characters watching a gig, a secret gig in this case, that was based on a real, um, uh, on a real experience I had where I went to a place and there were big real rock stars playing for 20 people in a small cafe. And it was a great experience working with, with her. I think the song, the song is super cool. <laughs> I, yeah, it, it, it is pretty cool. I and mean, I think that was a, that was a great in, input uh, into, into your film. Um, could, what, what was the most difficult thing you had to do as a director on a production like this? Because, uh, um, because you had an amazing cast your production, your set production, the background, everything was great. Even the house was, you know, the choice of the house was terrific um, for yourself. What was the most difficult thing you had to do in a production like this? Well, it might sound strange, but it was actually the cold because we were shooting uh, on these uh, New York sets in Bulgaria and it was minus 20. Some days, not every day. So it was really cold. I think that was the hardest part. Because <laughs> I don't like the cold. But everything else was fun. I mean, I, was, I felt blessed. Working with this incredible cast in these incredible sets. I, I thought everything was... It was a lot of fun. That is, and um, let me wrap it up with you, Alessio. What, uh, what, what is the, um, next after uh, American Night? Um, are, you, are you planning to do more American movies? I am working on some ideas. I'm writing, but um, I guess it's, nothing is ready to be disclosed yet uh, because we are still thinking about the project. <laughs> yes, I would love to. Uh, the, the goal is to do English language movies for an international audience. There is no, I don't think there's a point shooting movies in Italian language just because I come from Italy. English is the language that everybody speaks, or one of the languages that most of people speak on the planet. So the point is to communicate to as many people as possible. Most excellent answer. Well, Alessio, hey, congratulations for American Night. And thank you uh, for speaking to us about, about this thank film. You. It's a wonderful action um, film that everyone should actually check out. Thank you for your time. Thank you.